Yo, what's up, survivors? Welcome to Games Unhinged. I'm Anthony, and I'm here with Michael, and we're, today we are playing with all these awesome survivors on TDL Team Up. Okay, guys, today we have a special guest, the one and only Richard Keen. Oh, hi. This is Richard Keen. I'm the lead dev at Sandswept Studios and programmed probably about 70 or 80 percent of TDL. I'm over here on the edge jumping up and down. Boing. <laughs> And we got a lot of people in this game. Very nice. Yeah. There's a big challenge with TDL. Let me talk about the technology just a little bit. Yep. Um, in TDL, we have an infinite world. And most games, what they do is they will use 3DS Max or they will use the Unity engine and um, something like that. And they will design a level. And then after they've designed a level, they will compile that level essentially into their game. Then you load the level and everyone plays inside that one level. And whether it's Halo or uh, you know Call of Duty or whatever else, they're all done that way. TDL has a completely different challenge. What we're doing is we're generating a one kilometer block of the level on the fly while you're playing the game. And then we have to load it over to the client in the background without affecting interactive gameplay as much as we can. So. Um, it, it's quite a challenge, actually, to move the data and to keep the game interactive and such. But you'll see that occasionally in the game. You'll see things in the distance popping in as they get built and stuff like that. That's awesome. Hi, uh, we have uh, somebody, Con West, I think. I don't know his in-game name right now. He's joining the chat here. Okay, perfect. Let's see, where is he? There he is. No. Hold on. I'm very curious on where everybody heard about TDL. Like, I know it's Michael's story, and it's very annoying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I first heard about TDL from my uh, son, who is Jeff, who's our CTO of Sandswip Studios. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and probably five or six years ago, we started talking about this game and daydreaming about the game and what it would be like and how we would do it. And he wanted, you know, the ultimate zombie experience done the way that he really envisions a zombie experience should be. And I was like, you know, we could do an infinite world. That would be really cool. Have this, you know, world that just stretches everywhere. And um, so gradually over time, we developed that. We then took a detour, and we did the game Detour, which you can buy on Steam right now, for only $2. Uh, that was, a, that was a, a shameless plug there. And, uh, <laughs> but we did Detour, and that game at least really got it. We cut our teeth on how to build a game and how to get it published and all that kind of thing. And then we started on, D on uh, TDL about a year ago. That's yeah. so interesting. So that's how I first heard about it. <laughs> the first. Yeah. Yeah, I heard about it on uh, YouTube watching the Kickstarter um, video, which I thought was pretty funny. And I watched it like about 20 times trying to figure out if it was really a sandbox because every zombie game hasn't been like a real sandbox game until now. Oh, lights out. Oh, um, crap, it got dark. Oh, boy. I found it off of Kickstarter. Yeah. Yeah. I was just looking. I was gonna. I wanted to back it so bad, but I didn't have the money at the time. And... We should have. That would have been supporting the game, but you know, money. When you don't have a job, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. I would like to add a feature pretty soon where when somebody has a flashlight in their hand, if they're facing towards you, you'd get a big flare from the flashlight. I was thinking so the same thing. Yeah, because I don't think we can handle the rendering overhead of multiple flashlights running all around right now. But um, having a flare on flashlight would be kind of cool just to give you that nice night effect, you know? Do you know when we're, we're going to be... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go on. I'm sorry. Go on. I was going to say, do you know when we're going to be able to see other people's lights? Uh, it ends up being a whole issue of simply rendering overhead. We're trying to keep the frame rate up. As I said, we don't have a pre-compiled world, so... We stress the graphics engine really heavily in TDL, trying to just keep the frame right where it is. And so adding the lights in would probably reduce that some, so I'm not sure just uh, what we're going to do on that yet. Yeah. But a cool feature would be if somebody was standing on that hill, for example, way over there to the west, then... Oh, I just um, crashed. Oh, yeah, so um, did I. So am I. Wow. Oh, well, Problems. Uh, <laughs> I would complain to the lead dev about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I love the difficulty of finding things at night through flashlight. <laughs> Wouldn't it, it be nice to be able to chop a tree down and build a fire? That'd be cool. That's something I'm looking forward to. <laughs> if that happens, when it happens. Hey guys, I'm back. Hello. Hey. Ah! Attacked! Hey, how are you? I'll try to help you, but I'm not I opened very the fast. door and a zombie was behind it. 
So I walked past it and got attacked. Nice. Ah, die. Okay, you're not dying. Now you're attacking me. I'm not gonna lie, I was expecting Dana to be like one of the first people to we hop on this. She seems to like she wanted to. She's awesome. Yeah. She is. She's a good one. She's our does a lot of our marketing and stuff. Yeah. Where is oh, everyone? Doors hitting me oh. in the face. Okay. <laughs> Uh, doors. I went and asked on the Havoc forum, how do you do doors in a game, right? And of course they're like, oh, you use the Havoc hinge and all that, but see, it's too mushy. The Havoc hinge is spring-loaded like. And so we're using what are called keyframe doors, but it, it's, it's been the best so far. But I keep trying to think up new ideas of how to implement doors better. And that was one of the first problems that I had with the Deadlinger. In the very beginning, build one, doors not opening. <laughs> I, I know, I know. They are so problematic because you got this weird physics thing where they're hooked on one side that's not supposed to move, yeah. but the other part of the door is supposed to move. And in many ways, that's kind of a violation of the laws of physics. Yeah. That, you know, in, in mathematics, you can't have things that both do and don't move at the same time. They've, they've improved tremendously <laughs> since build 001. Well, they're right. keyframed, except now we have a thing in barricading that they go right through the barricade. So you can actually open and close the door through the boards when it's barricaded. Oh. But that's probably too extensive to fix in the time frame we have to get 009 out. And I have a fast zombie chasing me. I hate the fast zombies. Whoever Runners. invented those should be shot. Actually, <laughs> you should be rewarded. There, I killed it. Anthony, uh, for our real TDL videos, we found we found Richard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, Doctor Doctor Richard. I, yeah. I noticed you guys use their names in there. I'm like, okay. I have been called Doctor Keen before, but I do not have a doctorate in anything. <laughs> You're a scientist. Yeah, that's okay. I'm I'm willing to play doctor. <laughs> that's good. Oh crap! Ah, grass. Grass is an interesting study in rendering. Where are you oh, at, this Michael? Is nice. oh, there you are. You chasing a runner after me? Okay. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're helping him. Kill it. <laughs> Let's go, runner. Let's kill Anthony. Yeah. See, to me, one of the coolest things in this game is the infinite world and the terrain. But yet, when people review the game, they almost never mention it. But I just love going cross-country and just exploring the world as I go. Yeah. yeah. It's just awesome Someone how just you can get... find a mountain and just climb it. Yeah, you still climb the mountains. I love doing that. Is that a zombie right there? That's kind of what made me want to get the yes. game even more, oh, actually. It is. I mean, knowing it's an infinite, infinite world, it, it's like... Oh, I think I just... It's a little overwhelming sometimes, because after all, you can go 32,000 miles, or kilometers in a straight line. Yeah. It's, it's big. How long can you go before, like, because we've had problems where we travel too far, and it kind of gets bad, like the server is unstable. Yeah, um, if you go in the game and start traveling in a straight line and do not leave and rejoin the game or anything like that, then out at about 100 kilometers, uh, you start really getting into math trouble. Yeah. And really, probably at 30 kilometers, you do. Um, we have not worked on that aspect of the game because, like I said, almost nobody mentions it really. And um, we're working on making the gameplay fun first. That's priority, always. Um, fun game first. And um, implemented into the game is the idea that the location that you spawn in is the origin of the graphics and, and coordinate system. And uh, that has not been fully worked through and debugged all the way yet. But we will do that at some point where you can go, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll make a thing where I spawn myself in a thousand kilometers away from the origin and see what happens, that kind of stuff. Yeah. It just hasn't, it hasn't been a big priority. I want to talk about the, um, the hundred things that you can do or something. In oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At one point we began doing a spreadsheet and right now it's got about 130 or 140 lines in it. And it's simply things you can do in a game like this, in the Dead Linger, or could do. And so, you know, we put in things like shoot a deer, skin it out, cook the meat and eat it, you know? Wow. Or uh, nailing boards over doors, that's what we're implementing right now. Um, those kinds of things. And so we have this list of 130 things, and basically we go down that list and we do a kind of a combination of how fun they are and then how hard they are to implement. Uh, there's a farm over here. And, um, and then we're implementing basically in that order. Uh, so Distus asks, so is everything randomly generated? Um, the overall layout is randomly generated. We were randomly generating buildings, 
but we found that it was too much of a load on the server and the frame rate and such. So we have backed off a little bit, and now the buildings are modularly um, designed, and then they're randomly generated into the world. But the terrain is Perlin noise with what's called Voronoi areas, modifying them to get irregular areas on the board. And uh, the layouts of the towns is a grid with some randomness to it. Okay, we are approaching a barn here. This barn model, I love it. It's so well done. These are done by a guy named um, Jeff Macalino and uh, designed by Parker Hamlin as the uh, concept artist. And then Jeff Macalino is uh, doing a lot of the buildings and things. Gabe Priske did a lot of the buildings. And Dane Peterson has done a lot of the 3D character modeling. Whoa. And then, uh, Does anybody else the, see this? What? This, um... <laughs> the the barn is kind of <laughs> broken up on the side. I don't know how to get up there. I want there's a ladder. Oh, oh yeah. yes, there's lot a ladder. leveling. Yeah, you guys if there is a ladder there. Um oh, see there's in, in this revision of TDL, we uh, just place the buildings on the terrain and if the terrain is sloped then the building can be uh up in the air slightly on one side. Um in the next release, we have what's called lot leveling and we actually bulldoze the lots flat and then put the buildings down. And so you'll have much less of that. It'll still happen a little, but a lot less. Yeah. Nothing's got to be perfect, though, right? <laughs> Not yet. Never. It's never done. <laughs> Especially when you're a programmer. It's always like, oh, I could fix that. Oh, whoa, okay. Fell through the barn. It's all good. When you guys release the game, are you guys thinking about putting out little updates somewhat after that? or? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know when we will get to what you would really call the final release of the game. We just keep right. making it better and better and better, and someday we'll say, hey, it's good enough. Let's call it released. Yeah. But um, right now we're in alpha, and uh, as you can see, we are developing a lot still. I generally work about 12 or 13 hour days on the game every day. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I've never seen this before. This is cool. Cabbage in the barn. You're outstanding in your field. Yeah. <laughs> Bad joke, sorry. <laughs> Try to come up with better ones. <laughs> uh. And of course, for your enjoyment, there's going to be fall damage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then we're going to find skydive. out. That's right. Between fall damage and um, being able to board things up, it's going to be a whole new game on the next release. You're going to think, like, wow, this isn't even the same game we played last week. Yeah. Hey, Bells. Hey, Bells are so fun. You stack them up and do things with them. Mm -hmm. We we actually have we a video of us catch the hay bale. <laughs> yeah, catch the hay bale, and we also have a video of us putting them all together. And you could push one and like have twenty move at once. Yeah, yeah. Well, the big round ones. There's also huge round hay bales occasionally, and those are kind of cool. You push them up a mountain and push them off the edge. Really? And watch them like roll off into the distance. Oh yeah. I've never seen any of those. Uh, where are they? What? Um, <laughs> they are in the game. But they're really infrequent, I think. I'd have to huh. look at that. I have not played with a hay with a round bale in a long time. They're the big, huge kind, like the big tractors make. Yeah, know? yeah. The big round ones. Yeah, we have those. Where would you like find them? In the barns or in the fields? Out in the fields, actually, in the middle of a wheat field. So you have to get a wheat field, and you have to be lucky, and then it'll have some of those round bales in it, I think. I will run that by um, Jeff and see what we have done with that. I can't remember now. Uh, how am I doing on food? So you guys are um, planning to make this game with the Oculus Rift? Oh yeah, the Oculus showed up, man. We were playing um, Team Fortress with that. It is so great in 3D. But yeah, uh, we've got the. There is a shader renderer for Ogre to do it in 3D. And um, oh, someone's asking at the bottom of the screen here. So who's the dev? That's me, Thunderfist, uh, Richard. Uh, yeah, they can hear me. Okay. Um, uh, I'm gonna make sure. The Oculus can... Rift. Yeah, we're gonna do it. The thing is, is that um, there's a bit of a, a issue there because the Oculus Rift isn't gonna sell any copies of TDL because none of you guys have the Oculus Rift yeah. yet. But yet, it's really good marketing and PR to have the Oculus Rift. You know, it's like cool, and, and we're putting it in the game. But then again, as soon as the Oculus Rift actually goes on the market, then it's going to be essential to have. So we want to get it in fairly soon to get a little lead time on it, make sure it works well, and get the head motion right and all that. But yet, we want to make TDL fun first. Like I said, it's fun as first. Ugh, grass in the road. Okay, grass in the road. I am going to fix that. Just haven't done it yet. <laughs> Yes, you'll definitely be able to make a base later. Doing all Whoa, uh -oh. okay, I was Two not expecting that. Two zombies incoming. Ah! 
Okay, in I thought they were people. <laughs> <laughs> I have my armor ready, and I am about to go whack. Hey, there's a big mountain over there. That looks interesting. I'm gonna head that way. I mean, if you guys want to. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think everybody might follow you, so, uh... <laughs> <laughs> the leader. Well, that's because I'm so charismatic, I look so different from all the rest of you guys, that you're all following me, see? That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can we need see... to get... Oh, more sorry. Behind. What? Go on. I'm sorry. Uh, can we see clues on uh, other players yet? Uh, uh, we're working on that. Um, I've been doing quite a bit of skinning work in the last couple of days so that we could get houses to look different. Um, have different color houses and things. Um, I backed off on that a little bit because of some shader issues. But yes, we are going to have different clothing on people and all that kind of thing when, when we get to it. The thing is, is once again, like I say, we have this list of what's fun to do and what's hard to do. And we're trying to make the game the most fun first. Thus, barricading is going in like, you know, right away. Yeah. And clothing is definitely fun. Putting on bling and a really cool baseball hat, you know? Yeah, <laughs> and and some of the contributors from uh, from uh, Kickstarter uh, are going to have special bling that they can wear too. Um, I, I actually have a question. When are we going to get our like um, a gas mask? Uh, yeah, that's exactly what I meant. Um, people that contributed to Kickstarter, okay. we're simply trying to get the features in. We have to first get clothing on people, yeah, so. and then uh, we'll have the gas mask. Plus, there's a whole system there where you have a gas mask, which isn't part of the scenario, but it's owned by the player on our main server. Okay. And we have to work out that system still, um, and we, we appreciate that people want that. You know, uh, it's important to have. Uh, my flashlight's dying. That is spooky, man. Whoa! Zombie. Oh, he's a runny one. I don't like to mess with those. Oh, wow. Oh, now I, I get picked to get killed. Okay. <laughs> ah, but you have your trusty friends with you. Oh, crap. Now I'm getting killed. Ah! Wait, where'd he go? Ah. Oh. There, he's down. Here's he ran off. One. Try to attack someone else. I'll try you to hit him with me. my fist. Oh, whoa. Disappeared. I need... Yeah, we are right on the boundary of a one kilometer block. Um, I think we're getting some physics issues where you're transitioning between the two sides of the block. Like, I'm going to run away like a cowardly little girl here. Now, can I, um, like, in the fields, how come there's more zombies than, like, sometimes I feel like in the fields, like a straight out flat plane, there's more zombies than there yeah. are in the suburbs. Okay, in the revision of TDL, which we are playing right now, which is 008C, the Voronoi areas are being clipped to the one kilometer boundary. So very often a flat area near houses was supposed to have houses, but it was outside the one kilometer boundary. Okay. In 009, I've already done this, um, we use the entire Voronoi area. And so you're going to find the houses will extend out in more irregular areas than they do in, in the current game. Guys. I don't want to swing and hit one of you guys, it's so hard. Okay, revolving door, <laughs> flying through. That's very weird. All right. Goodbye. <laughs> okay. Have any of you guys gotten infected yet? Yes, in the I game? have. Seen that? Yeah. yeah. I am. You start getting dizzy spells, and they get worse and worse, and then you die. And then you become a zombie. Or your, your body becomes a zombie, but you spawn in somewhere Yeah, I never else. really, like, understood, like, when we first started the infections, when we first started playing with them. We didn't. I didn't really realize that you could turn into a zombie. Now, when, I heard that when you die, a zombie spawns in your place. Is that true? Yes. After 30 seconds, a zombie, a fast zombie, oh, respawns okay. in the location where you died. Nobody die. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why generally, if you get infected, you just want to ask your friends to shoot you in the head, um, because if you die from being shot, you don't respawn as a zombie. <laughs> okay. Not a lot. <laughs> yeah, Michael. <laughs> I, I always get infected. I'm like Anthony. I'm I'm done. Uh, this is my end. Shoot to me, please. Yeah. Oh, you're my father. No, I am your mother. Anyway. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> the the horrible twist. I'm going to that sports over there. Okay, guys. Where? Yeah, I'm um, too. To oh, there the it is. Southeast. Southeast. Dinglarn has left the world. Okay. Oh crap! Here's a fast zombie coming. He's after Cameron. He's chasing him. Let me help out here. Uh, we are getting rapidly surrounded. Okay. Um, oh crap! Now I'm being I don't attacked. Have a gun. That's what I get being a hero. Now I'm being attacked. It's a chain, chain effect. All right. 
I'm gonna hide, take cover. Yes, when you get very close to them, they will aggro on the nearest in contact person <coughs> rather than following whoever they were previously on. We're actually. Oh, I just died. <laughs> Great, now we have to worry about a zombie. No. <laughs> uh, probably not. Probably not. I don't think I died of zombie itis there. That's good. Coming! Wait for me! Breaking in. Oh, food. Yes. Uh, Richard, have you seen our um, zombie hoarding, or has Jeff ever shown you that yet? Yes, yeah, the picture of hoarding stuff in the closet and everything. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. We used to do that with the uh, garages that used to be out of the ground. Elevated, yeah. Yeah, elevated <laughs> garages. Finally, oh, no, this... a gun. Oh, yes, I love this gun. Uh, I just crashed. Ooh, sorry. I have to apologize every time someone crashes, see? Oh, it's fine. It's personal slight. No, um... Oh, my, my light went out. Oh, crap. This is just getting nasty. I'm gonna go hide in the corner. Where'd everyone go? Oh, they're all downstairs. Oh, I'm upstairs. On the top Somebody's of the Somebody's up on the roof, too. Yeah, well, it's... I was trying to collect food, but my light just went out. I got everybody. Are there any loaded guns under the counter? Um, no, there isn't. There's just paddles. I'd rather oh, have that than a plane. There should be guns everywhere. Let's see. This is America. <laughs> yep. Okay, I got food. Good. Now, out the back. So, debugging waypoints in, it was done with the Swartz store, actually. Um, we have these things called waypoints that are all through a building. And when the zombies are trying to get to you, we do an A-star path along the waypoints to find the shortest waypoint route that will get to the player, and then they go and they find you. It's been working out pretty good for the zombies. <laughs> yeah, it made them quite a bit more difficult to deal with. Um, yeah. No, but it's been fun. Uh -huh. Well, we're actually going to try to get in a, about a day of um, zombie pathing improvements in 09 also, but we'll see if that ends up in, in that or 09 A or B or something. Because okay. we've got some cases where zombies don't aggro long enough on people, and so if you go around the corner, they lose track of you and things. All right. Are you guys all on the roof right now? Um, uh -huh. I was, and then oh, okay, I'm about to die now. Um, mm, no ammo. I will Promise. rescue you. I am coming. See, I've gotten used to jumping off the roof of the swords. That will not work in ah. 09. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the same with um water towers. <laughs> yes, that will not work either. Okay, there's a fast zombie aggroed on Anthony. Two of them, actually. Uh, and oh. I don't have any more ammo. I'm coming. I will save you. If I had a hammer. And we really appreciate Swartz for donating to the game. He was one of our top donators, so he got the store named after him. I like the name. Oh, is that a, a last name? Yeah, it's the last name of the guy, or his, whatever his name. Uh, I'm no. Sure if it's the last name or if it's an online name. Ah, I'm dying. So what are you gonna need to actually start barricading things? A hammer, nails, like wood? Is that it? Um, yeah, nails. We're debating still. You have to have a hammer and some boards, and oh. you wield the hammer, and then you hold the board in front of you, and you put it where you want it. And if it's up against a surface of some kind, then you can nail it in place. Oh, that's cool. And uh, I'm thinking I may add in a sledgehammer thing too, where you can put a post in the ground. That'd be cool. Can you nail um, boards to other boards? Yes. All right, guys, that's all the time we have for today. Click the link below to check out our channel and other videos like our Real TDL series. Follow us on Twitter at Games and Hinge. Please like and share this video, and don't forget to subscribe. We want to thank all the survivors that played with us today, and give special thanks to Richard and Dana for supporting our channel and being awesome. So see you next time. Peace.